Good afternoon. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We are continuing here with this examination of convergence and divergence with regards to a series, an infinite series. This specific test, D. Lambert's ratio test, I don't know how to pronounce it properly, but he was a French mathematician. The name of this specific test is informal and it lends itself to a very interesting name. How about we just call it DART test and we can do exactly that. We just call it DART in this video. It would lend itself to a good name D-A-R-N-T, DART. This is a good test for measuring convergence and divergence. Like any other test I'm talking about in this video, the previous video or the future videos, all of these tests can be utilized for measuring both convergence and or divergence based on how you interpret the result. For this specific test, your test is limited to those series which have positive terms. You would be looking at these specifically with those type of series which have only positive terms like A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus all the way up to AN where N can be infinity. It doesn't have to be but it can be. Again nothing over here restricts us to either geometric or arithmetic or neither style of series. You can use these type of tests for a varieties of different styles of series. Anyhow, this test has excellent points and features to it, but it has one drawback. For any series that you're looking at, you have to basically be able to develop that rule for it. You have to be able to formalize that progression in form of some sort of rule, which you know would be preceded by something like this and like that. You got to be able to establish that rule because it requires you to look at everything here with regards to a ratio. And the ratio will be everything here as you know to the n plus one term divided by the nth term any item in that series or any member of that series in terms of that specific point and the one right after it you do a ratio between the two you understand what this means if i have a series which is like one two three four and i'm saying a second here is two you know a three here is equal to three this is my first my second this is my third, my fourth, my second term is a two, my third term is a three. But if I'm looking at this as an a nth term, then this, you know, is an a n plus one term, the nth plus one term, because it's one more than the one before. it. That's exactly what we're talking about. A ratio of the succeeding term divided by the preceding term. So remember that. How the test is interpreted is by means of the outcome of that ratio. You have to determine the limiting value of this ratio which you will form and that ratio will look very much like a rational function because when I show you the examples it will look like a rational function, a certain function on the top, function on the bottom and you're trying to do some form of a limiting value of that function which is similar to your procedure as you would do for a horizontal asymptote determination and if you know how to do that everything here is easy. Think about it in this way, limit as n approaches infinity this ratio a n plus 1 divided by a n if it's equal to 1. The test is inconclusive. You have to rely on a different other test to determine the convergence or the lack of convergence for the series you're looking at. If the ratio value is less than 1, you're looking at a case of convergence. If the ratio value is greater than 1, you're looking here at a divergence. The best way for me to show you all of this is by means of an excellent example which will demonstrate the case of convergence and divergence. Let me show you two examples. One involving a case of convergence, the other divergence, in no specific order, but we are looking at a series which will look exactly as what you see over here, an infinite geometric series having a common ratio, and you've seen something like this before. If you were to determine this is convergence or divergence, you first have to establish the rule, which is what I was talking about. You need to know what the rule is. What's the rule over here? Any value over here with regards to n equals, well, you can say from here is zero up to infinity you're looking here at a case of 3 to the power of minus n or you can say 1 or 3 to the power of n. Let's just eliminate this style over here and keep it to that. 3 to the power of minus n and you know this right here, the rule is good. 3 to the power of 0 is a 1, 3 to the power of minus 1 is a 1 or a 3, 3 to the power of minus 2 is a 1 or 9 and onwards. And this is good. So my a nth term can always be 3 to the minus n but what's my n plus 1? that term 
and you know it's going to be 3 to the power of minus n plus 1. Now you're doing the ratio of these two, but you know the ratio is always in this way. Limit as n approaches infinity, you're looking at the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term, and you have to plug these in. You have 3 to the power of minus parentheses n plus 1 divided by 3 to the power of minus n. You can open that. Limit as n approaches infinity, I'll have 3 to the power of minus n minus 1 over 3 to the power of minus n. Now do some algebraic play or simplification. You're looking here at 3 to the power of minus n times 3 to the power of minus 1. Think about it. Common bases, exponents add and you get that. Divided by 3 to the power of, this should be a minus n over here. It was a little typo. That's what you have. Cancel this out. You're looking here at limit as n approaches infinity, you're looking at 3 to the power of minus 1, which is 1 over 3. What does this 1 over 3 tell you? Well, think about that rule I told you. If that ratio is less than 1, you have convergence. And 1 over 3 is less than 1. So this right here is a series which you know already to be convergent. Well, it's convergent based on the DART test, and it would be right. 1 over 3 is less than 1. And we're good, we're looking at a convergent series. So this example over here has been completed. Everything stemming from right here, this particular ratio, and with this particular outcome leading to convergence. You know what I'm gonna put over here, my next series which looks like this. One plus three plus nine plus 27 plus 81 plus all the way up to infinity. You know this is a divergent series, but we're using the DART test to show it. I have to come up with the rule. What's my rule? The rule over is 3 to the power of n, and we're going from n is equal to 0 to n is equal to infinity. 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, and we're good. Our rule is good. What's my a nth term? It's always 3n. What's my a n plus 1 term? It's 3 to the power of n plus 1. We have to find this limiting value of this ratio, limit as n approaches infinity, and it's always the n plus 1 term divided by the nth term or the a n plus 1 divided by the a n term. We'll do this. We'll do exact same algebraic simplification. We'll do 3 n times 3 to the 1. These two multiply the common bases are the same. The exponents add. You get that. Divided by 3 to the n. You can cancel this out with that. What you end up seeing here is limit as n approaches infinity. The limiting value is equal to a 3. Now you have to think about a limit as n approaches infinity. That value you've determined if it's greater than 1 then you're seeing divergence and that's exactly what we have. We have a value here 3. 3 is greater than 1 so we will indeed see divergence and this series right here is a divergent series based on this test but we also already know it's divergent because it's not tending towards 0, it's tending towards infinity. That right there is the DART test in a very simplified manner in a nutshell and that's something you need to be aware of. Perhaps the most difficult part of it is to establish this rule. It's very easy for easy cases, but it can get complex or complicated based on the rule determination for a more difficult case. Since I have your attention here for a few more minutes, let's just apply to a specific series, just a single example. Our series is this. We have to determine if this right here is a divergent or a convergent series, and you know where this thing is headed. It's headed as you see, 1 or 2 plus 2 or 3 plus 3 or 4 plus 4 or 5. Is this convergent or divergent? Well, based on the DART test, you have to determine a rule. What do you think is a rule? Each number in the denominator is always one more than the number in the numerator. The rule can very well be this. You're looking at n and the denominator is always one more. We're looking at everything here from n is equal to 1 up to infinity. This right here represents my rule. My a nth term will be n over n plus 1. My a n plus 1 term will be n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus 1. Think about it. That's exactly what it will be. When you simplify it, you're looking here at an n plus 1 over n plus 2. Now you have to apply it in terms of the ratio limit as n approaches infinity. You're always looking at this divided by that. You're looking here at an n plus 1 over n plus 2 divided by this n over n plus 1. You can flip this around. Remember a rational function in terms of horizontal asymptote or limiting value determination never has to be done unless you've simplified it. You have n plus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 over n. That's what we end up seeing. Not very much simplifies over here, so your thing becomes limit as n approaches infinity. You multiply, you have n squared plus 2n plus 1 divided by n squared plus 2n. 
Now think about horizontal asymptote determination for this. You would do divide everything in the numerator, everything by in the denominator by the highest order of variable exponent, which is n square. And that's what you would do. You would divide this by n square, you divide this by n square. And look how everything will play out. I'm gonna put the expression over here. You'll have n square divided by n square, which is a one. You'll have a two n divided by n square, which will be a two over n. Then you'll have a one divided by n square here in the numerator. In the denominator, you'll have n squared divided by n squared, which is a 1. Here, you'll have a 2n divided by n squared, which is a 2 over n. Limit as n approaches infinity, these zero out because you have a small number dividing by something very large. You end up seeing here a 1. Now, you're seeing that the limit of this in terms of a ratio is equal to 1. And I told you with regards to this rule, if our value in terms of our ratio from the dart test is equal to 1 in terms of this limit, we have inconclusive idea over here with regards to the test. The test is inconclusive. I cannot tell you if this is convergent or divergent because I'm not getting a value less than 1, in which case it would be convergent, or a value larger than 1, in which case it would be divergent. The value in terms of this limiting value of the function is equal to 1. It's inconclusive. The DART test does not help me out, so I have to seek out another test. So with regards to this specific DART test, this series here is inconclusive. But you can go back to your basic test or your comparison test and do your determination. If you think about the basic test, you never have to do anything beyond that with regards to this specific series over here. Because remember that limit as n approaches infinity, that thing was not, if it tended towards zero, you could have been convergent or you may not be convergent, but if it was not equal to zero, if a n was not equal to zero, we were certainly divergent. The fact that you have a horizontal asymptote determination, we'll, we're just calling that our limiting value function, you're seeing that you're not really tending towards zero, but you're tending towards one. Think about these. These numbers will always get larger and larger in terms of the numerator and denominator, but that value will always become closer and closer to one. Right here, you have four or five, but eventually we'll have nine or 10. Eventually we'll have 99 divided by 100. Eventually we'll have 999 divided by 1000. You see how close we're getting to a one? Eventually we'll have these many nines divided by a million and we'll be getting ever and ever closer to one. Based on the basic test of convergence, you're not seeing this at all. So we don't have convergence, but you're seeing this. So we have divergence. We're seeing this because our values are tending towards a limiting value of the function, which is really a one. And that's what all of these values will tend towards. So based on the basic test, I can say that this series is divergent. Based on the DLM Berts or the DART test, I can say only it's inconclusive. And that's all I want to present to you in this specific video. Remember, this DART test applicable for positive terms, series with positive terms. And you have these three scenarios that play out based on the value of the ratio. Ratio being less than one, convergent. Ratio value being greater than one, divergent. Ratio value being equal to one, inconclusive. Have a good day. Thank you.